round of 16. Welcome to the round of 16. Now we are back here and getting the show on the road here. This is a best of three out of five in the Super Owl number three. It looks like he's queuing magic 99% of the time. That is control magic. I am queuing aggro war. So would like a another one drop to go with these, ideally. I can play both on one. It's not the best, but the Valkyrie is kind of the card I'm reaching for here. But opening with both on one is certainly solid and something Get I can't do. Ready. Don't disappoint me. Not a good hand here. I'm just going to say that most of my deck was pretty cheap, and I'm going to assume that I can draw into things. I need to come out with initiative early here, so we're going to go with the with the double open here. Very likely to bolt one of these two minions off the board. Um, yeah, so there you go. Bolt's there. This goes face. I hope I can play another minion here. I can't. Vicious Ren, one of the worst cards I could top deck. This is a really bad start here. Let's see if I can find Very, very bad start indeed. Tipping into the Bibliomaniac, drawing some cards here. Thundercaller, good draw, but ultimately he might be able to kill both of these minions next turn, which is going to be a bit of a bummer. If he can't, then another round can get some value. So we're asking the question with the Thundercaller, but a, another Star Shard Bolt here. They might just tracking and run into here, leaving this open. This will be a target for another round. We do want to sink the another round on this minion. And we will be guaranteed to buff a white for a guard. Very awkward draw this game. But this was a good line here, buffing this. The universe continues to do they have a guild enforcer? Uh, no, they have an answer. So they'll be able to remove the minion very easily. We will play the buff white for a guard first. Uh, we will definitely empower that sucker. There we go. Get this in play. Very large and annoying minion. They can pip, pip here and then probably use another spell to get rid of it. It probably can kill this, but the question is, is can they kill this after they kill this? We keep coming at them at waves. We're asking some questions. So if they play a front line, the question that we have to ask is, do we long shift or not? And they will indeed be able to kill this with this attack at a minimum. If we do, do the attack, we I will play another white for a guard here. In almost every scenario. So, they're at six now. And they have the Stormstress. I think here is a unique scenario where we can just go face and not get penalized. So Viking Longship comes down here. This is flank. So we're gonna go face here. I'm going to do something that's a little bit controversial. See, he can't use the GP here and use the GP here, so I'm going to do this. Hmm. Utilizing the flank. We could have Vicious Ren to remove this. They can attack here, ping here. This line, I guess, looks really bad if they've got another Stormstress. But we're just trying to get there with burst. We have Vicious Rend in hand. Might get value out of Blade of Sticks next turn. Definitely an interesting line with the long ship going face for sure. Okay, we bait an unbound. Were they pipped to, to, to GP here? That does look to be what they're gonna do. So we will do 
this line is relatively simple here. We remove this minion. This goes face. And I'm not worried about the Brawn Servant in the Sanctum. Stormstress is very effective for them. Another one of these. Tough decision here. What to GP this? I want to save the Viking Longship if I can. So we will be able to kill the Stormtrist here with this line. I'm going to deny him favor. That is not possible. Use the GP. Hmm. We do have Vicious Rend left in our deck, which could be a key. They've got the City Planner. The City Planner is pretty annoying. We're one point off of Lethal here. We can uh, play this and this. The long ship, the imp, and this goes face. But that takes six, 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 six mana. I think I have to play Thundercaller in GP, but we are a little bit vulnerable if they have Safeguard Incantation here. If they don't have Safeguard Incantation, this and this is lethal. They do indeed have Safeguard Incantation, and that's going to be problematic for us. Because we no longer have lethal. Crystal Tech. Now he has to actually kill both minions here. So we actually win. Uh, the Imp, the Longship, and this Archer that's stuck on the board will be going face to chip the Protective, but Woodcutter Imp will go face and win the game. Assuming he's just going to go here, which he might just go face thinking that he needs to race here. He's already seen one Viking longship this game, so he's probably thinking I don't have it. Yeah, he goes face, assuming I don't have it. I do indeed have it. But the Viking longship will indeed win us game number one here, because we do know what flank is. Uh, a little bit OP there, showing you the power of the longship, a very underappreciated card in this tournament. Game number one went our way. We queued in with Agro War, came out with all the speed. They queued with Control Magic, looked like they might have been gaining control of the game, but a tricky flank play was able to get us the win in game number one. And now we queue into game number two here. We're going second. This is the Control Magic Mirror. So these games are typically wars of attrition. Neither of those are those are great in opening hand. There's that. Jeez, this was a very bad mulligan from our perspective here. Let's see how many ways you can disappoint So we have no ramp, we have no card draw. We have nothing good, nothing positive to say about our opening hand here. And it's only getting worse. This mulligan was really, really bad. And the situation is only getting rougher here. I mean, I hate doing this. But, like, I have nothing else I can do here at the moment. Our hand is is just a brick. There, there's no there's no way to sugarcoat the situation here. 
We're gonna be pipping on a, a five drop next turn almost every scenario here. My turn. I mean, why couldn't we have had that time bomb earlier? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slap down a Guild Enforcer. The awkward thing is they've got the Star Sword Bolt and they, they, they basically go face for three for free here, which annoys me. But I didn't have a double bolt clear on this, which isn't a super clean clear. So, I don't have the, the clean clear I want for this minion. It looks like he does have the clean clear. He's going to be able to lay horde. Though the lay horde can't go phase, so it's not the cleanest of clean clears. But it is effective. Now we get the crystal tech. Now we have a dilemma. Do we ramp? Um, we're a little bit behind on tempo, which is somewhat problematic. I can lay horde star shard. I can play Shape Blast. I can play Stormstress and Prey. A lot of mediocre options this turn for fake news. Yeah, this is not the ideal setup I had coming into this game. Really bad opening draw, and we're kind of paying for that right now. I hate to give up those two resources to kill the Guild Enforcer, and it would have been better off if I just led with that last turn. I tried to stick a Guild Enforcer and maybe getting paid for it, or, or, or maybe may having to pay for it, I should say, not getting paid for it. Obviously, we're not getting anything. This draw is pretty much the nut low. They have their Guild Enforcer come into the battlefield. Another Guild Enforcer, and we have no answers for that. Um, what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go ramp up here and then hope we draw into something useful it's amazing how we had no good early plays and how we have no good plays in the middle game but sometimes the rng is just this way and of course we just go right into their stormstress here they're getting tons of free chip damage which is just going to make it so easy for them to burn us out when it comes later in the game we really need something good off the top of our deck here otherwise this game is almost over before it even started Had one mana there at the end. I think they forgot to hit the end turn button. This is an ugly play, but we just don't have better. We have to we have to go ahead and kill one minion because we can. But they're still picking up this chip damage, which is so problematic. We're a couple turns from getting out Helion, and maybe Helion can ask some questions. Um, probably asking the question, do they have Ratify, which the answer may very well be yes. Yeah, just getting those chip damage is just so key in this matchup. This looks promising. Have a Guild Enforcer. This thing is not going to live, though, is it? I hate doing this line, personally, but we have to. You could have argued Stormstress might have been better there because we kill this and that makes more value to the Time Bomb because of this minion. Um, but that being said, maybe him delaying to kill this Time Bomb actually is good for us. That's another th thing to factor here. I just assume the Guild Enforcer is just getting peeled. Yep, another Bolt will indeed remove that. He can go face with these for 7 points of damage, put me at 10 probably have lethal next turn or the turn after. My version is not running any safeguard incantations, so the odds of me finding a way out of the situation is slim to none. Not to mention the favor situation here is absolutely absurd. Yep, the star shard ends up that back goes there. Even the Helion doesn't get a lot of value here. The possibilities are in They like to buy the Rune of Sight. And this game looks like a pretty easy walk in the park win for Mighty Uncle. Just a very bad draw. It started in Mulligan, and it felt like after the Mulligan phase, we had no chance of winning the game. And as the game plays out, there has been nothing that has happened in this game, which has made me change my mind here. They probably toss a Worm Breath to the face here, or they've got to ratify us even better. For, for better for them, not better for me. And uh, 
I, I don't see any scenario where they don't have lethal next turn. <laughs> it's uh, hard to imagine one. So they go ahead, buy more burn from the Sanctum here. I, I guess we draw here, but this isn't really a pathway to, to anything. Um, sure, I, I, I really don't know. And I fully expect them to just kill me. I do not expect this, this game to last past this next turn. I think we're about to be at 1-1, and we indeed will be with the, the least surprising lethal of all time. So queuing into game number three, we won game number one with War. They won game number two with Magic, and we are both playing Deception in this game. Uh, we're going second once more here. Going to take Orpheo's Distraction. Um, yeah, this is a matchup. I would rather be playing Hidden Rush. Looks like they're going with Thievery, which is interesting in this matchup. We're both playing control-oriented decks here. We have the Cutthroat in our opening hand, but we're going second. I don't like it in my opening hand going second, because sometimes you can kind of get owned. Found by her will makes sense early in, in some spots. Stone skin's good against their pickpocket. Let's keep Best of luck. assuming they have a pickpocket. Thievery is the value generation gob power, but we're looking about sneaking a minion on the board, hiding things, and, 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 and playing it this way. So we can like hide a wither already? fingers, for instance. And just hoping they don't generate lots of value off of thievery. Now, getting two bound by her wills is very unfortunate. Um, not much we can do about that. And here, I'm just gonna hide this so it just doesn't die that way. One step at a but time. It's a pretty minor play <laughs> this turn. We know that they have Inconspicuous Carriage because we copied it. And they indeed do get the Thievery Blade rolling here. The Blade of Sticks is Meteorite, so that means it came from their deck. Well, not Blade of Sticks, uh, Makeshift Shiv. So we go ahead, go face for our one point of damage. We'll feel proud, and we will show them the card that we copied from their deck, which they may be very aware that we copied this card, or they may think that I'm running it. One of the two. Our decks are the same, so it's, it's actually not that much information. This could... I'm actually not 100% sure. I, yeah, this, this, this card is in my deck. Yeah, this card, yeah, it is in my deck. Though I might have uh, forged mine up to Meteorite, so that might be a tell. <laughs> maybe maybe a slight quality tell there, but uh, we'll see if the... Maybe he'll figure that out, I don't know. But we do, we do know at a minimum he has an Inconspicuous Carriage, which we can play Blade Borrower and Bound by Her Will on. And he generated a real man off of this, which is interesting. Here, we are going to go ahead and play Armor Lurker, go face with these two minions, and I'm going to hide their Armor Lurker. That way, when it loses Hidden, I can ping it off next turn. It's kind of slow, but it does get the job done eventually. Also, it uses all of our mana because they might want to Umber Arrow this thing. They're going to Cutthroat us, they're going to take our Wither Fingers. They're going to know about our Bound by Her Will and Blade Borrower as well. So, they had the first Cutthroat. Uh, part of the reason going going second here, uh, you don't want to keep the cutthroat is because your opponent can indeed cutthroat you and get value that way. We draw nothing of use, so we're just going to go ahead and remove their minion. This will indeed go face. That gives us enough favor to purchase from the Sanctum and buy the Ambitious Adventurer, get some card draw generation going. We draw our cutthroat. So... Could play Cutthroat next turn. We don't want our Cutthroat to get Cutthroated. But since they already Cutthroat, and they saw that the rest of our hand was very non-satisfactory to steal, they might be less excited to toss out a Cutthroat themselves. It's one thing to keep in mind. This 0-2 just kind of clogs up space on the board until I decide to Rapture. He can't actually kill it. It cannot attack. A real man does not attack is uh, something we're learning here. Some value generated from thievery. 
So you, you always think in these matchups that a Rapture comes at some point, and that generally is true. He knows I have Blade Borrower, and he knows I have Bound by Her Will. He knows I can take this minion. So that's something to keep in mind entering next turn. But I think we just take it. He probably plays Rapture, and we live with that. I think we just forced the Rapture here. He, he knew he knew we had this card. He knows it's coming. And we just have to live with the consequences, I guess. These three minions will die. This will be left as a 1-1. We will then cutthroat them the turn before they can play Wither Fingers. And that will indeed be of some use to us. They have the option of picking up from the same thing here. Uh, they do, yeah, they do get the inconspicuous carriage with no, no bomb shuffled in their deck. So I can, at a minimum, at a minimum, steal back my Wither Fingers. That's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, we can do something really special here. Maybe get their Cutthroat and then steal another minion. So we have information here. They have Wither Fingers, uh, two Wither Fingers. They've got a Hunting Trap for a Wither Fingers as well. So, they have Umber Arrow, Stone Skin, Hunting Trap, Blade Brigade, Wither Fingers. That will be what is left in their hand, so we know five cards, and we'll need to keep track of that. We'll take Wither Fingers, that is indeed the best card to take from their hand. Makeshift Shiv will go face. We are pushing some face damage here, so that is good. It's a trap. We have a Hunting Trap, which is very good if they decide to play Wither Fingers this turn, though... The interesting thing with Wither Fingers is you don't want to play the first Wither Fingers, so it's kind of a game of chicken. We have both used one Cutthroat and essentially just traded back Wither Fingers for Wither Fingers. One potential way for me to win this game is play Wither Fingers and hide this. This is, a, this is something that I have available in my arsenal that my opponent may not have in his. All right here so they would like for me to play wither fingers here but that's not i'm happen. not gonna do what my opponent likes because that seems seems counterintuitive to me so we don't have a good play this turn and that's fine we don't have to force anything they spent their sanctum favor on that and we just simply took two points of damage and peeled it off I guess they saved one point from this. They they are getting value off of thievery, which is annoying. However, I'm hoping to get win conditions such as Wither Fingers online eventually. There's some situations where Uncanny Rogue can be very useful. They steal things, and stealing things is great. So I can bound by her will this minion which doesn't feel like the thing to do when we've got all of this, which can steal a higher value minion. So if I play Wither Fingers, then it just, it's just going to be a sitting duck and just die. That's tragic. We would like the Ruin of Strength in the Sanctum. This is somewhat annoying. I don't want them to copy anything from my hand. So I can Bound by Her Will and then hide it and potentially steal something from his hand. I, it's such a cringe line, though. All right, you can play Wither Fingers. It's funny. Time to focus. Oh, boy. Such a cringe line. We have all this strength reduction in hand. We do have Umber Arrows somewhere in our deck, which could be a value. The Guild Enforcer. Makes sense he was sitting on that. We will copy one card from his hand, which could be very useful here.
hoping to get something good. And we copy, we either copy Hunting Track or Guild Enforcer. We'll just weaken this so it's less problematic than it stands on the board here. That will go there. This will go towards the face. This allows us to buy the best card of the Sanctum, which is the Ruin of Fire. And that will end our turn. We have eight cards in hand. We are aware that they could steal this, but they have to be somewhat cautious of a rapture dance which by the way we are 16 14 cards into our deck and have not drawn We're taking the time to voluntarily remove their minion draws a card also um prevents situations where they could be too wide if they do indeed steal the guild enforcer which is definitely something they may do but they've got the piercing bolt which they probably generated from thievery chip away at this, I bet. It's annoying, probably just give up the room of fire for it. Yeah, we'll give up the rune of fire here. So next turn what I want to do is I want to play Wither Fingers and I want to hide Wither Fingers. I can't do that. They can play Wither Fingers, which will be put this to sleep and give it burn. I can then hide it once more. Like a true degen. I may only get one attack out of this, but they're at 16. So how many attacks from this can they take? Silent Blade will chip away at this minion. They have another Umber potentially? One thing I like when they're this wide is Wither Fingers will be hitting some of their other minions. Another Umber Arrow, interesting. So Wither Fingers will hit this, this, and this, and we can hide it, which is very important. So this is, if you're wondering why we took this god power and not the greedy thievery god power, the idea of this play is exactly it. Though if he has double wither fingers here, we look kind of stupid. He will have one wither fingers. We know about one. That comes down. We can actually umber arrow uncanny rogue to remove this. Gets rid of this minion, which is very annoying as well. These two will die. This lives, which is actually good for us. We will be able to hide this for one more turn. This card was actually really clutch that they just played. Because now I can't do the play. I, the play I wanted to do was Umber Arrow, give this deadly and then trade into here but i can't do that play now so 
So we're gonna do this play, burn one of our hunting traps. That must have hurt. This ruin of life in the sanctum can be very big for us too. Another thing to keep in mind. You're probably only getting one attack out of this sucker. Best case. They could have a second Wither Fingers here very easily, too. Beauty is Dedicants. They can copy cards out of my deck. side gains favor and they buy the rune of life so I can't just keep hiding this which is a bit annoying because uh, that was my going to be my game plan I hate to give up stone skin on this in case they've got something a little bit better I just don't think I have many other plays this turn. We need to push eight here. No! Damage. That's not gonna happen. Slime might have been a mistake. here. I think it is. Okay, we get our Wither Fingers. Mm, well, that was underwhelming. They could Rapture to kill this. The healing can be problematic for them to deal with too but we are at 12 so we have to be worried about some things I think Helion's the card I want to play next turn because I can do Wither Fingers and hide Wither Fingers the turn after okay they're going to do Cutthroat they're going to take my Helion for sure I'm going to take my Wither Fingers. But they know about my Helion. They Stone Skin this. Wow. There's no exchange. So if they get in one extra point of damage, they generate that off of Thievery. Nothing super exciting and exciting for the same thing. Um, there is relic removal, and eight's a good number because we could steal their other wither fingers or claim it with this. Expecting either a stone skin or wither fingers. We do get their wither fingers. This could be huge because we can wither fingers and hide the wither fingers next turn. That could be a huge steal off the patient pickpocket. The they have the wither fingers. The do they have a way to get by this minion? They indeed do not. So. Hunting Trap, Hunting Trap may be the line here, actually. No, wait. No, I can I can use the Uncanny Rogue here. This, on this, this, and this. Well, then I can't... 
hide. Maybe hunting trap, hunting trap, hide Helion is the line here. Hunting trap. At least they try. Hunting trap. And then let's just hide the healing in here. That way we're not killing this either. They need two front lines in a way that doesn't lose to Rapture. We're not worried about Card Shark for, for that purpose. The Helion is asking a lot of questions right now. They have the, the other Venus Tears. That is clutch for them. However, we also have Wither Fingers. I'm trying to think of this better play. What beats me here? Anti Magic Expert beats me, right? Is there a way I can beat Anti-Magic Expert? Hmm. I don't think there is. The bigger they are, the more they suffer. I'm gonna hide this one. Make them wait for the punch line. Definitely been an enter entertaining game from from what I, what I would think would be, be the viewer's perspective. They're able to kill this. Awkward. They have the Guild Enforcer. And they can weaken this probably too strength. We need to pip out here. Um... Umber arrow, hi yeah, face, hide this works even if they get this down one more. So that should be a win for us here. Maybe they buy the card shark. But we can steal the card shark and hide here and still win that way. Wow. Confusing my minion. Is there a lethal here? I can play Rapture, which is very effective. I think this is the best line because I think they're very unlikely to kill us. That must have hurt. So we put them at one. I had I had some outs there with a 50-50 on the wither fingers, but I didn't want to risk it. Very interesting card to generate off of Thievery. They've got the Stone Skin here. But we do have Umber Arrow and a way to strength reduction in this minion. And he probably is aware that that's a possibility of being at one. Does nothing for him. He needs a way to hide this guild enforcer, actually. He does not have that. So, the blade borrower. And the umber arrow will get us there. Wow. What a game. That was a classic. Uh, the classic battle between picking thievery versus picking Orpheus distraction. And in that, in that battle, we saw benefits of both, which is something that you don't always see 
in, in a match like that. It's it's not clear cut which is best. And I guess in the comment section, <laughs> you can leave your own opinions on on which one is better there. So game number three, I think that one's going to go down as an instant classic. That was really a hard-fought, exciting game. They're queuing back with deception. I'm queuing back with magic here. We've lost a game with magic already in this series, looking to kind of redeem itself. We got the crystal tech in the opener this time. This, <laughs> this opening hand, <laughs> completely different than the pile of trash I had last time. I can tell you that. All, all the cards were better than what I had last time. I'm going to full keep this. The tracking early. I don't know necessarily. A lot of times people, we see him pick the, the this god power here, which makes me think that he may be playing Hidden Rush. He picked, he switched god power. So when he, in the deception matchup, he picked Thievery, which, I mean, it's, 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 it screams control deception. But here he's picking Morpheus Distraction. So I was curious if he's Hidden Rush. Tracking Bolt really strong against Hidden Rush. Um, but it appears like, since he passed on one, we're probably looking more control-oriented stuff. So, the debate for next turn is, do we rush to ramp? I mean, just assume we draw into something eventually, right? Okay, we, we provoke a hunting trap on a time bomb. I think we're happy with that. My turn. So this is controversial, using my pip like this. But there's just nothing else to do. Which is a bad excuse, I get, but it, it's, it's an excuse. Okay, he's gonna hide this, so he's gonna guarantee he's gonna take one card from our hand. We draw Unbound, which is the best thing he probably could get. And Crystal Tech. Now, I can actually leave both of these in my hand if I want, but we're just gonna go ahead and just keep the ramping going. Now we were, we've ramped really, really fast and have nowhere to go. He's gonna I thought he's gonna cut broke me, but he did not. Um, definitely, a couple of bolts takes care of that minion here. Do I want to give up the tracking or the blizzard? I think I want to give up the tracking in this particular matchup. So we will go ahead and do this line here. Blizzard, you can put a minion to sleep for one turn. And then there's tracking here. So something about Rune of Sight is somewhat scary because of Cutthroat Insight. But then again, I think it's the best card in the Sanctum. And he's going to Cutthroat, he's going to get value. I mean, at minimum, he gets an Unbound right now. Interesting. I kind of like options. not hiding the Bibliomaniac because we can play the City Planner. And he can't steal the City Planner when we know it's on top of our deck. We can play it next turn on Curve, too. I, I like this. Lack of balance keeps things interesting. I assume he's going to babysit some of my 1-1s on the board because he doesn't want us to just chip away damage in favor like this. But the city planner, and we've already provoked one hunting trap, so we feel good about that. And the bibliomaniac's not a bad keep because it's just it's just card draw. So we we bait the cutthroat. He's gonna take the unbound here, which is a solid take by any means. But we keep secret the city planner. Now, if he just goes face here, okay, he he, he trades. So I was about to say, it, it kind of signals whether or not he probably has Rapture or not. I still have to play around Rapture, though. I, I, I definitely attack one of these minions into here. Uh, just, just to go ahead and make, make the trade there and then go face. Uh, he can get some value out of Rapture here, obviously, with City Planner. But he does, he will take seven. He will take seven if he plays Rapture. So that's the good news. So that kind of oftentimes gets him to delay the, the Rapture front. He knows that we have a Warm Breath in hand, so he knows about that burst. He's pipping the six double dealer. And he got rid of our worm breath, which was pretty effectively, and got rid of the second My portion turn. of this, which I don't think we really mind. We're gonna draw first before we know what we're gonna do. We're probably gonna trade here. Probably gonna trade there. Keep the maniac. So 
I'm gonna play this one. This spends more mana, but I want to trade here anyways. So he, he, he can board wipe. If he's got Rapture, he's got a board wipe regardless. So I'm not going to play around it. He has to use his pip and buy this, which is fine. We get the city planner to come right after that, which is good. And the card draw we're getting really offsets a lot of the harm the double dealer did. So he either has Rapture here or this is very awkward. If he has Rapture, we probably just slap down the Diamond City Planner. He probably has to pip by Form of Power, because he, he can't eat another 7 here, right? That just doesn't seem like something he can do. He's going to weaken this minion. All right, interesting. Now, he, he might be able to weaken this enough to where it's not a problem. Okay, getting a decent-sized board here. Um, I think the simple thing to do is just go straight towards the face here. I like buying the Ruin of Life. It prevents our opponent from buying it. It's more productive than this, even though we can play it this turn. This line asks a lot of questions. Now, I know Rapture's a common thing for him to play here, but even then, that's kind of gutsy. He's at six. We pushed a lot of damage here. And we're at 30, so there's really not much risk in this line. Pipping into Unbound, that will be a board wipe, but, I mean, that, that can't feel particularly amazing for him. This looks promising. Draw to see if we get into legal. Okay. So this threatens lethal, because God Power Flame was, 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 was the path to lethal there. We're not really concerned about Cutthroat taking this. I mean, we've got so much burn in our deck. The Wither Fingers loses to Flame with the second Shattering though, and uh, this was this was a classic game. Of we our first game we got a really bad draw with Magic. This game, we got a really good draw with magic. And the difference is absolutely everything. We will advance to the round of eight. That game number three, absolute classic, I thought. And definitely the game of the match. Uh, it's always fun to have one of those. And uh, see you for the round of eight. And if I win the round of eight, I'll be in the final four, which might mess up the broadcasting for my entire tournament.